What is up, Retro Maniacs? Welcome to the Retro Card Chat Podcast. My name is Mike, and I am from Mike's Retro Trading Cards. You know, I was a little offended when I saw Darren Ravel say that no real media outlets cover our hobby. Let it be known that this podcast has a professional journalist on staff, as well as a guy who used to look in the newspaper to get his fantasy football scores every week. They are, of course, Joe Day and E.P. Eric Bahawick. How are you doing, guys? <laughs> doing great. <laughs> One take. Mike, you were worried. Yes. One take. Yep. Well yeah. done. If people bro, only bro. knew <laughs> how prepared I am. But yeah, I mean, we have a professional journalist down there. Yeah. Real? No real media outlets? Come on. <laughs> we are a media outlet. Actually, Mike, we have a journalist. <laughs> actually, we have two journalists. And I'll tell you why. I wrote for the school newspaper in college. Wow. I have published wow. this school newspaper. God's honest truth. <laughs> Wow, that's not as true. Yeah, so we have two. Was that an advice? Was, was that an advice column? What, what was that? You got published? <laughs> don't want to know. Like a dear happy situation. It was a dear happy situation. That's all I'll say. Oh wow. Well, <laughs> there you have it. You know, you need to look into who's telling you what in this hobby. Yeah. And if you want the truth, you come here. That's all I got to <laughs> say about right. it. <laughs> How's it going, boys? Long time no see. Yeah, it's been yeah, a yeah. solid. 29 hours since we yeah. saw each other in person. Um, I'm doing well. I'm doing very well. I uh, just got back four ish hour drive back from Danville, PA. I need a beer. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. After, after that four hour drive, I need a beer. So I'm going to crack one open here. EP, you going to join me as always? Oh, I, would I am. I am. Yep. I got one myself. EP actually texted us as we were getting ready. He goes, Are you boys drinking a beer? <laughs> Which was, Joe Day, are you drinking a beer? Yeah. <laughs> and I said, what, EP? I can't let a friend drink alone. Absolutely. So, right. so here we are. Cheers. The true friend right there. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Joe was actually in town and we got to hang out a little bit yesterday. Yeah. And Joe and I actually hung out on Friday. We well, did. Wait, no. Today's Monday. So we didn't hang out yesterday. We hung out <laughs> on Saturday yeah. and Friday. Yeah. Let me get that all straight. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> We got to go to the rusty rail and they mm. still didn't walk up to us and offer us any kind of endorsement deal. I'm a little disappointed. I think <laughs> next time we might need to go somewhere else. I, you know, we don't have an official <laughs> endorsement with the rusty rail. We love their beer. We really do. We really do. We do. But yeah. we might have some free beers coming from a very, very fun brewery for our next live stream. Mm. So look out for that boys and girls because i'm really excited for that but yeah the rusty rail kind of kind of ticking us around a little bit i was not sure they know who we are maybe maybe they don't know who we are i mean that's the thing how do they that's not know who we are i wore my t-shirt there yesterday EP. <laughs> you did <laughs> both of you did but you had them covered up maybe that was, the problem. <laughs> that was i don't the know problem. I, I felt like i was in the playboy mansion when i went there yesterday that's all i know <laughs> they had the, the waiters just... and waitresses walking around with buddy ears on i know it's supposed to be because of easter but i'm just saying it didn't it didn't feel like that like it felt a little degrading i mean the buddy I, ears I almost said easter. something about it the bunny is re Easter. The the night robes though. I don't know what they were doing wearing their their bathrobes there too. I so. don't know either. You're right. And why did our waiter not have his bunny ears on when he waited on us? But then when the next table came in, he did. Like I was a little offended by that. We're not good enough for the bunny ears. Now we're no, not good enough for the bunny ears. No, no, because I, as we walk past, loudly says, "I swear to God." If our way you did actually you did. Oh, did you did. I did. You <laughs> forgot did. about that. I completely forgot you said that. <laughs> wow. Well, Very now I know. <laughs> so he was probably he was probably every time he came to our table he was taking them off and then putting them back, <laughs> back on and we would remember the table. Oh, he wow. probably was. I forgot yeah. about that, Joe. Oh my god. Wow. But, way to go, Joe. <laughs> EP, we got a free meal. Oh. Cheers to Mike and Amy. Yes. Yep. Thank Cheers you. Cheers to Thank Mike you. and Amy. They, they Again, I tell doctor. people all the time how nice of a guy I am. And yet another example, but people just want to criticize me in the comments, make their sarcastic <laughs> comments, not believe in me. I'm the guy you want to know. Though I think it was Amy's credit card, to be fair. So cheers to Amy. Cheers it's to all, Amy. It's all the same account. It's all the same account. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and we awesome. stopped at the card shop too. So yeah. Yep. Who, who knew the three of us got together and we went to a card shop. <laughs> yeah. The rusty rail in the card shop. I mean, I'm sure people would have never guessed <laughs> even all our viewers who have never been to any of these places. It's not, it's not our fault. They put the card shop on the way to the rusty rail. That's right. It, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Yukon cards and comics, you know, yeah. if I you're ever in Montandon, Pennsylvania, First of all, I'm sorry. But second of all, make sure you stop and say hi to John. It's like the only reason to be in Montana. Yeah. He's he's a cool dude. He has a, a fun shop in there. Like, I I, I do enjoy it. Um, I bought a box of cards. Mike, you bought a couple boxes of cards? Yeah. Big League Baseball. Mm -hmm. I actually got some good hits out of mine, too. Some so. content creators? No. Sadly. <laughs> Sad. That would have been did you great. See, did you happen to look up the odds for those things? They're no. like one in 750 packs or something like that. Like they are like super, super, super short prints, like ridiculous <sighs> short prints. Well, the the foil Griffey card I got are apparently like one in 1140 mm -hmm. some packs. So yeah. I should have yeah. gotten two influencer cards out of it instead. <laughs> I think you prefer the one Griffey. <laughs> yeah, probably. Not gonna lie. I think you probably prefer that. Yeah. We would be yeah. remiss if Mike and I didn't talk about hanging out with our buddy Mike Jones a little bit the day before the three of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Out. Gave us gifts and everything. EP missed out on some gifts. Yeah. That Silver, Surfer, had, Silver comic. Surfer comic over my shoulder I have displayed here was a gift from Mike Jones. A fantastic gift. See, yeah. Mike knows how to do it. EP didn't bring me a damn thing yesterday. What? Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe. I, I gave you that Fleer Ultra Alan Everson. <laughs> Insert card. <laughs> oh, you mean that card? Look at that. There we go. I know. You can. <laughs> Since you can't really see it. Yes, EP. I was just joking with you. I had right. it back there the whole time. <laughs> Look at that. EP gave me that. Very cool. Yeah. You know, everybody says EP is such a rotten guy, but <laughs> I say he's a nice guy. He's, he's not bad. Did you did you use the He's not promo? Bad. <laughs> did you did you use the pro mold yet? Is the real question. Funny story on the okay. pro mold. Okay. I got that Allen Iverson upper deck glass card, and I took it downstairs today. I was getting it ready to put in there. I noticed there's a crack in it. Oh, no. I was like, oh my god, how did I not notice this? And it's like too late to like to do anything i yeah. could technically still file a claim on ebay but i'm not going to be that person like mm. uh, I, I i even use that for like three cards i, I didn't <laughs> notice like it's right in the middle of the car oh, so yeah bummer. so i'm going to keep the pro mold for for something else for another you know 100 what? point card yeah, i also I dropped myself. off some beer for you guys and mike got the special one he got himself a spike dunkin donut coffee I put yes. a can of that in. I love that stuff. And he's ready to crack one he's, ready to, he's ready to crack it open right now, right? Mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah. Oh, I'm going to wait for the live stream. Yeah. <laughs> That'll draw the viewers. Mike is going to drink the spiked coffee. Yeah. <laughs> He'll be bouncing off the walls. It'll be fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Up caffeine and malt liquor. <laughs> But yeah, we had a good time. We might, maybe we should try to get a Marley's sponsorship instead of Marley's. Was real. Good. I, Marley's I, I enjoyed good. my time there. Their beer is not as good though. No, it's no, but I've, I've enjoyed, I've enjoyed their stuff. In the past. food's good. So food, food is, is delicious. Good. Yes. Yep. Uh, and then me and Mike Jones went to Quaker Steak and Lube, which is never a great thing. No. And I was pounding 22 ounces for like five hours. Thank God the hotel was literally in the same parking lot. <laughs> like it was, it was, uh, it was a disaster zone. Mike even joined us. Had I was going to say, and was like these guys. Yeah, are like wild. five hours later yeah. after like, you guys have like, been there. I got saw texts that you guys were were you know met for lunch, had had a few beverages, and then Mike left, and then Mike went back to drink more beverages, and you guys had just kept drinking the beverages the entire time, oh, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole yeah. time, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I had to go home and edit videos and, you know, be the responsible one. And <laughs> Joe's just out there pounding them. I, I needed, I, I needed to do like some like hardcore math to figure out how many ounces of alcohol I had over that amount of time. <laughs> it hit three digits. That's all I'm going to say. Wow. Whew, it was a, I felt it, great the next day though. To be fair, I did feel great the next day. Nice. I slept well. I felt like EP. 
DP waking up, no hangover. That's kind of how I felt. <laughs> I wasn't hungover either. So good time. Well, hopefully you'll be feeling good on Wednesday when your hot takes drops hot on takes. the channel here. So uh, EP, you claim to the viewers you'll have another episode of Extra Innings with EP on Saturday. Absolutely. Absolutely. And Probably. we have no idea what we're doing Sunday. Maybe we'll have a video Sunday. Maybe we won't. I don't know. Just check. Check at 7 a.m. If you don't see it, we're not having one. Not going to wait. make you wait all day if we're not dropping a video. But yeah. yeah, so that's actually the channel lineup I remembered for the first time in weeks. <laughs> but let's get into it. You know, I dropped a little bit of a teaser in the intro. I don't know if you guys saw this or not. But Darren Ravel, you know, is starting a real media outlet. To cover our hobby, or no, not our hobby, our asset class, EP. Did he really say that? Yes. The The press release was uh, media outlet to cover the asset class. We'll just if start just, with that. If you're going to call it the asset class, then you don't deserve to cover this, this hobby. Um, get it, get out. Like I, That's ridiculous. That's gross. <laughs> you're not covering the hobby. You're not covering yeah, the hobby. Right, You're right. covering yes. investment. You're like Jim Cramer on whatever channel Jim Cramer does his. You're also like three years online. too late, bro. If that, if <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, like, like, uh, right. this feels like a 2021 thing <laughs> that would have been here and gone by now. So, yeah. But yeah, the it is going to be collect.com. Now, don't go out there spelling collect the normal way. It's actually not collect it's whatever <laughs> c-l-l-c-t.com is pronounced like i don't think it's collect i think it's cooked maybe is it cooked pat may i buy a vow <laughs> uh maybe a couple of them i don't know that's uh wait who owns collect that let me just see what i was gonna say that whoever has collect.com is yep. going to get like all of the traffic yep. from this stupid website like what, oh. what kind of a name is that yeah, it's yeah collect with the vowels is porn <laughs> is it really <laughs> 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 it's not, i mean it's not. odds are yeah <laughs> i mean it's gonna be right like whoever yeah. has it's like oh i gotta use this my best advantage <laughs> I think it's all like the magazines. Uh, it's like a amalgamation of all the magazines that are under the collect umbrella, like no. actual magazines. So well, they're going to be like, sense. wow, our numbers are great. The traffic is killing it. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know where to start with this. Um, how about, uh, first of all, to come into the space and say that there are no, okay, maybe not a traditional media outlet covering it. But I, I mean, I've seen stuff in all kinds of traditional media outlets, right? EP, sure. you're the you're the journalist here. You explain it to me. What well, is what, he the, talking about? The thing that I, well, I mean, I'm guessing what he's talking about, which is something that really gets us newspaper people in a gets our panties in a bunch, is he's talking about uh, TV, like TV stations, like CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, like all these, like the the, the TV stations. But if you like, Sports Collectors Digest has been has like has been publishing and talking about this hobby for how long mm -hmm. and so that's this is totally totally crapping on source collectors digest but let alone beckett which is also i, I mean, was just gonna say I, wouldn't beckett yeah. also be considered right. in that realm as well yeah yeah i mean so it's to say that there's no media outlets i mean those are two like long-standing hobby staples that that are beloved by the readers of those those um those items and so to have to, to say that it's just like it, it's it's i mean again i feel like they're probably pushing more of the online which i, I mean both of those um outlets ha already have online as well but more of like a, a tv type thing which is i mean again it gets i don't want to say real journalists but sometimes like tv journalists get the real journalists a little upset because they but what happens is let, let me just this is a little bit of an aside I, okay so i used to i used to cover sports still love sports and I used to cover high school sports. I would go to every single basketball game, every single baseball game, every single football game for the, the local team. The TV sh TV station shows up one for one game, and they clear everybody out and say, oh, TV's here this week. They need to have all their speeds for all their cameras. They need to have their the booth all set up and stuff like that. They're there for the one time, and everyone's making a big deal about the TV being there. Literally, and then like a, like me and me and our, our, our photographer have literally been there for every single other game. And so, yeah, that, that, that's the kind you of stuff that, to that the happens. Side. Yep, that's, that's the kind of stuff that happens when you're talking about TV versus uh, the other 
sources of journalism. Joe, your thoughts on this? I, I, how do I follow that up? Um, <laughs> I mean, you were I was some kind say, of sweet or other for somewhere. Yeah. As a, a real journalist for the Pitt Bradford uh, Daily, whatever we did. Um, no. Um, I, I'm curious on like how much stuff is he going to put out before it gets repetitive? Like we talk about certain folks that we, we love that put out five videos a week covering news and we think boy they're really stretching sometimes like he's gonna do a whole news station i i guess uh, is it gonna be youtube is it gonna be a website that links to youtube I, like i need to know a little bit more has he given any other information like i feel like just i feel it's very thing, vague yeah. i feel I it's think, very vague on what he's gonna be yeah. doing I, f I feel like it's uh, um I feel like this could be done. Like, like uh, if you, you, you could, if you had resources, and I'm guessing he's probably got some backers that are, you know, giving him some good resources, where you could do what Source Collectors Digest does and what Beckett does, like on an even grander scale than what they're doing now. You could do it that way. But if your focus, if your, if your announcement includes the the words asset and class, and they're next to each other, like you are definitely going to be focused on focusing on something that is going to get repetitive and again is out, outdated at this point. Like I, I, I wonder how many of those people that were investors in asset in this asset class are even still in the hobby. You know, they're probably going to like cover industry level news and probably sales. Like what? Like I agree with Joe. Like what? what what are you going to cover like i i don't know you're going to call yourself a media outlet but <laughs> really like everything that there is to cover is being covered by like content creators and whatnot and not the not what not what i need to stop saying <laughs> i know we were going to drink not. every time he does it yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah have a drink but yeah like so like a lot of people complain that it's repetitive already. Like, I, I don't, I don't know, like what is out there, unless you're going to totally concentrate on sales and investing, which how long are you going to last if you're doing that? Like, I, like that ship sailed. I don't, I, as much as people want it to be 2021 again, like that kind of thing came and went right like i i don't know i'm confused by it i'm i'll be interested to see what it actually is and we can talk about it a little more once it's launched i mean darren Ravel seems to have a little bit of a high opinion of himself you know he used to work for espn and he was the sports business analyst and you know he, he does have connections so i'm sure you know maybe people that run companies in the hobby might use them for a direct line of communication to push out any kind of information they want disseminated into the hobby. I don't know, but uh, yeah, like this is going to be a mouthpiece for fanatics, right? Oh, for sure. Yeah. 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 I feel, I feel like <laughs> more than EP, more than EP, or more <laughs> than EP. Yes. More than EP. More okay. than EP. The thing is, though, as you guys both said, like I, I don't know, sales are going to always be important. The, the the market of the hobby has always been being going to be an important thing, and you know, that that business side of it. But if you're not, if you're creating content that is based on a hobby like this, and you're not also focusing on collectors and telling collector stories, I just feel like it's just going to be you're going to be like a the business news, and it's like it's, it's going to be all press releases and not no no real no um, substance, like no, no all, all meat and no potatoes. Um, all, all sizzle and no steak, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, so a couple of things. One, Darren Ravel, uh, has some really great takes on people being allowed to, you know, play around with cards to get better grades. So he was on the Jeff Wilson show a couple of weeks ago and was totally cool with the Kurtz card care stuff. So mm -hmm. whatever. So as a collector, I don't really believe anything he says. It actually reminds me as we're talking about this and I'm, you know, politically one way or the other, I don't care where you, where you are, or what you do, but there used to be an NRA station, like NRA television. And they would talk about, they would do like infomercials a lot of the time and they would do like how to's and stuff like that. And I'm thinking maybe it's going to be something like that. Like just infomercials. How to use Kurt's card. Care. Yeah. How to use Kurt's card. <laughs> how to properly like, trim a card. Right. Like, 
back in. Like, yeah. I just don't know, like, like how much content you can put out there before again. Like, I'm saying this repetitively, how it can't get repetitive, you yeah. know? And we're all kind of in this space. I, I mean, I feel like someone like Jeff Wilson will be on that channel a lot. I feel like he's going to have a lot of a lot of his hobby investor friends producing content for it. I, I would not be shocked by that at all. How Even Jeff end? Wilson, though, has like added more hobby kind of content right. yes. to his yeah. channel as the market changed. Like he's not all the investing thing like he was right. pretty much before. So like mm -hmm. even as the biggest content creator there is, he's pivoted. So like mm -hmm. I, I it just if how is there's always this big money that comes into our hobby with these like really dumb ideas that aren't necessary that right. most of them end up failing pretty quickly. Like imagine if that money went to like the good of the hobby, like in better parts or were used. I, I don't even know how, but like, it's just, you have these big whales at the top that come in with the big money. Oh, we've got these grandiose ideas. All of them that if the market would be like it was in 2021 forever would be great ideas. But like, the rest of us sitting around looking at this stuff, we look at it and we go, why, why are you wasting money doing that? Who, who's going to use this? Like, go ahead, EP. Why not partner with, as, with the Sports Collectors Digest or Beckett and add, add that part of it to it? And then all of a sudden you make something, an established thing that's already beloved by people even better, like but, but potentially even better. Because like that, they that talk about like, stuff they don't want to talk about. Yeah, I was going to say, or man. potentially worse, or yeah. make them potentially worse. <laughs> How, how long did the NRA station last? I didn't even realize this was a thing. Like, how long did that last? Like, that that's uh, maybe a good barometer to, to gauge. Oh, yeah. Do you have, any, do you have an I'd, idea? I'd, okay. I'd, I'd have to look into that, but I, I know about it because of a uh, John Oliver last week tonight story he did on it. Hmm. Um, so I don't know. It was, it was, it ran out of money pretty quickly. And the NRA is a pretty big organization. So hmm. I don't know. Like, it's kind of interesting to see how long this potentially could last. Who's his backers too? Uh, would anyone be shocked if it was just Michael Rubin feeding money into this thing? Yeah, I mean that's possible, right? <laughs> wouldn't, that would be wouldn't gross. shock me. Yeah. yeah, like who else has money in the hobby? I mean, and if they're behind something like this, and if that's he's not case, like independently wealthy, right? Like it's not like Darren Rebell just has so. right. all her right. money. You know, though, like in a twisted way, this would all make way more sense if it was Michael Rubin backing it just to be like a mouthpiece. Okay, right. then I understand what your mission is right. and, right. you know, know where you're getting the money and know why you're doing it. But yeah, other but then, than but then, that... But then that real journalism part becomes an absolute joke that be, I mean, yeah. you, like, you don't take, you don't take money from something that you're covering. Like, yeah, that's, that's a, that's a really sticky, like that. Don't, don't do that. That, that, that you just get rid of that real journalism part. <laughs> the real word. No. Well, you know, Michael Rubin's probably friendly with him. So he probably doesn't have to give him any money. He'll just get favorable coverage without mm. having to spend a penny. Right. Mm. Three years, EP 2016 okay. Okay. as he's production in 2019. There you go, buddy. All right. Real Thank journalism, you. right? All right. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of Michael Rubin, he was in, he had an article in Bloomberg, which, you know, no real media outlets cover anything. Mm -hmm. But, you know, interesting <laughs> things from that article. He initially raised $2 billion in 2021 to get into gambling, which, you know, he sold his ownership stake in the Philadelphia 76ers. So we, like, people knew he wanted to get into that, right? And then... Apparently, they realized that, you know, the players that are already there are pretty well established and it wasn't something that they could go in and just disrupt the industry. So Josh Luber and Gary V got his ear and pushed him to get into trading cards uh, because the trading card industry was an industry he could exploit, which I'm not. I'm not arguing that point because legitimate, yeah, that's truthful, but it kind of gross to read that written out, right? Like uh, you use the use quote that was in quotes, right? Was yeah. was that an actual quote from some? From it was an people? actual quote. Was that as an industry he could exploit? I I mean, I'd Without love to know. Quotes. Right, I'd love to know which one of Gary V or Josh Luber 
said that, by the way. I mean, I could see them both saying that, but I'm just curious which one mm -hmm. actually is the is the the quote there. Even um, if Ruben took it as a Josh like, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was, I was oh, just no, going to say even 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 if he took it as like that. If that's how he. If they were they were saying something else, and that's how he took it. It's still completely gross. Like there's there's still yeah. there's still something wrong in, with the way he's the, that's being processed. So, speaking of Josh Luber, I was in Central PA and watching TV and my grandfather doesn't have a DVR, right? So we're watching commercials and that sneaker thing that he owned and sold had a commercial. Stop have it. you guys seen these? Yeah. Like I'm well aware of around. that. I'm, <laughs> I'm aware of it just because my kids were into that kind of stuff. And like, oh, okay. you know, my one kid would have on his Christmas list, like everything. And it'd be from like there where it's like, dude, this is not something that we could just get you like, well, yeah, but <laughs> it is still around. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, I mean, in terms of this, you're right, Mike. I mean, of course the, they, it, he's it splitted it in the last what two years. Like, so they were right, but it sucks that they were right. You know, like I remember going back all the way to episode one. <laughs> we were uh, we were talking about this and about how, oh, you know, he went to 10X the hobby and all that. And, and, and I remember saying, I really like the hobby as something that no one knows about, like something that we just kind of have, like, like, like that it band. Fantasy. That band, right? <laughs> the band that, that you love was, those song, yeah. right? And and then all of a sudden, everyone likes them. You're like, oh man, now I don't even like them anymore. And <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to not like the hobby, but it's just like every player in the hobby just feels like all they care about is the money, which I get. It's a business, but man, it just doesn't feel like there's actual collectors in charge of anything. And that kind of stuff. Actually, Nat Turner, maybe, <laughs> maybe <laughs> Nat Turner. He's probably the closest one, but yeah, man, it kind of sucks that like actual collectors, it feels like, nope, we're just going to succumb to the businessman and, and just let them handle everything. And, and it's really, first really... too that is people like the Gary V's and the Josh Lubers who, you know, come into the hobby and like do stuff and then just kind of get out of it and disappear that like, bring him into it like again 2021 it was never gonna end this is never gonna end like these people that are so smart and so rich honestly thought that this was gonna keep going like this forever like clearly i feel like you know watching the hobby documentary and seeing stuff that these guys have done and said i feel like they really believed that it takes a special kind yeah. of stupid <laughs> it really does you know when we were doing research for that hobby documentary i went back to ours and and i was like uh, like i said before the three schlubs from central pa knew it was gonna end like we were like whatever you got sell it now you can buy it back later yeah you know and for the most part we did that i succumbed to some fomo i know we all do but like for the most part we were smart about like you know sell that stuff off the bubble's going to burst, and when it does, you can kind of come back in, get what you want back, and then move on from there. And and just it's just like people holding seven hundred fifty thousand dollars cards, thinking, "Oh, there's no end in sight for this card." It just yeah. It, but you're right, Mike. They, these are the smart people in the hobby, and it really mm -hmm. makes you question what people are defining as smart nowadays. I, I think the article really, um, Joe. You said the words ten x ten x in the hobby, and remember we like we weren't sure what that meant. We were like, we were like, like kind of figuring out what that, trying to think what that meant. That really, really put the put put that into focus, right? That ten x yeah. was clearly clearly about the money. Like that yeah. was it was all it was all about the I money. I mean, we if, figured if pretty exploit. much everybody's figured that out a while right. ago right. now. But right. back but in I mean, episode this, this, one, we didn't know. For <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah. yeah. I but, think episode twenty five, we figured it out. I'm not even exaggerating. I'm pretty sure it's that time oh, we started talking about that. Okay. <laughs> um, well, the other thing too is an EP. I know you're a, you. You guys bought boxes of big league yesterday for how much were they a box? Fifty five. Fifty five bucks, which is awesome. Do you think when he's the only show in town, big league is going to be fifty five dollars? Yes, and whatever NFL equipment will be as well. So cute. You're adorable. You're adorable. I, th I think I love I think, you. I think series one. I think what the, I think they're actually turning series one into more of a premium type. I think the series one's gonna be more expensive, but they'll have something like big league for like 60 bucks a box for, but, for all. The okay. Board. Let me, let me just ask you a question. Mm -hmm. The person who was told that he could exploit the hobby 
why do you have trust that once they control everything and there's no competition from any other company that you're still going to be able to get it at $55? Uh, I mean, I I guess I'm naive, but I feel like they're gonna have. I feel like they're gonna have some some really low end ish type option like this that's available. But they're the mid end mid tier stuff's gonna gonna go up and up in value. And there's gonna be more stuff in the mid tier that's currently in the lower tier. That's that's. So you think I, they're gonna just have one product to throw cheap people a bone every year? Yep. Yep. And then, like I said, mm, I, I, think series, I think series one. Like if you look at, I, I had I had series one hold held series one in my hand for the first time. This this year, and uh, I, I got up. A, I got a jumbo pack, and that is a premium looking card. It is way more premium than a normal tops looking top series series one series two type card. And I think that is probably like the the first step in them saying, "Oh, well, this is going to be four hundred dollars for a jumbo box instead of two hundred dollars." Well, box. keep in mind though that series one is more expensive by way of shrinkflation. Mm -hmm. There were twenty four. Now they're down to twenty packs, and it's same price. So. It is actually, it did go up, what, that'd be like 17%. So, mm -hmm. yeah. How about yeah. that? It'll, it'll be more next year, yeah. Tops How won't be under $100 a box. Like, that'll uh, be over $100 nope. a box. But everything else will be so expensive. It'll be like <laughs> Panini. Like, if right, you're right. Be able to get Tops for $150, you are like, oh, wow, that other stuff is all eight and $900. I can get this for $150. Right. Not thinking that two years ago I paid fifty dollars for it right. so and uh, and i really i think that's going to happen once once you throw the word exploit well if you're going to exploit you're going to exploit and i think it's going to go all the way up you know you're going to you're going to look at products like tops chrome football would i be shocked if it was the same price as prism mm, probably not i mean that happens I, i'm out I'm out on Prism. I will, or I mean, I'm out on Chrome. I wouldn't. I wouldn't get any of it if that was the case. I mean, I I would hope not. I would hope it's yeah. not. But I mean, maybe it's closer yeah. to Optic, which still isn't that cheap. You know, let's oh, still be considering fair. with the amount of, number of cards you get compared to the price. Right. So yeah, definitely not like mm -hmm. nothing close to what we used to get with uh, Topps Chrome boxes. Mm -hmm. Well, who would have thought that a billionaire that you know took over the apparel sports apparel business and kind of like made everything cheap and like you know took advantage of that market would come into the hobby and me. maybe not be in it for us maybe just me. be in it to make money me you, you knew that yeah me no me yeah. every goddamn episode of this show <laughs> where ep's uh, like yeah, no it's gonna be free yes me me i've been saying it me <laughs> is that what i sound like <laughs> that's exactly what you sound like <laughs> And you do you, not, do. you, do you just, never watch yeah. the podcast? Yeah, apparently not. Uh, <laughs> you say it really fast. You say it really, really fast. Well, you know, Michael Rubin was also at Cards HQ recently. And the one little interesting tidbit out of that, Sports Card Dad Dustin had a video on this and had the clip on there. This is where I saw it. But Michael Rubin said to Jeff Wilson about his store, this is what we want. This is what we need. So, yeah, like, unfortunately, like, UConn, Cards and Comics and Docs Oops. and all, all the places we like to go and all the places people, like, that watch our podcast here probably like to go. He doesn't give a shit about those places. Like, the, the whole outline for what they want to shop to be – isn't by accident and it's probably only going to get worse once they take everything over. So yeah, that was I, a shocking little shocking statement that he made during that. Yeah. There, there was someone on this pod. I really forget. I wish I could remember who said it, <laughs> but there was someone on this podcast who said stores like uh, Mike's upper deck are not what Fanax is looking for. And someone else on this pod, I wish I could remember who it was told me to shut my mouth because obviously I was wrong. I don't remember who said what and in what order, but I just, I, it, it, I'll have to look back at the archive, but yeah. Yeah, of course. That's what he wants. He wants the FYE style stores and they're, they're gross. Breaking news. Someone in this podcast will be in Atlanta in the next couple of months. And someone is going to go up, grab a hundred dollar card and offer $99. You won't do it. <laughs> You, you won't do not. it. There's Matt, no way you won't do it. There's no way you'll do it and record you it. You won't so, do it. I and dare record it you. and record it to show it on the podcast. There's no way you would do There's something no like way. that. No way. Especially if I have a couple of beers before. 
<laughs> you know I'll do it. <laughs> I'm hoping you do it. Everybody, let Joe know if you want him to do that because I so want him to do that. And then when they say no, you need to say, let Jeff know I'm here. <laughs> let, let Jeff know that Joe Day from Mike's Retro Trading Cards is here, yeah. please. Yeah. Come on. He may have heard of EP. Maybe. He's heard of us, right? He had to have heard of us by now. I, I have to say that I I'm, I, apo- I want to apologize to everybody that in the intro we didn't say bring your barf bags for these first three, uh, the first three topics we talked about because <laughs> they are all linked in this like really gross like part of the hobby right now that I, I just is really terrible. Yeah, and I okay, think the fourth well, one. <laughs> thank you for setting me up there, EP, because we're going to keep the ball rolling this week. Oh, we God. are all oh. about the fun <laughs> stuff this week. So this guy ran a poll on Twitter the other week because our good friend Dustin, sports car dad, had a, a poll out there. Basically, his, his was worded, the statistician in me, like... I didn't really like how he had his worded because it was kind of you say things in a certain way that'll make people, you know, give you a certain result. I didn't like his, but like I put out the question, are you okay with card repair kits? Not car, card repair kits. Our results were actually kind of shocking to me because most of the people that follow me on Twitter are very similar to the people that watch our channel here. Like they're people that like our retro cards. They're not about the trimming cards, the card care kits, but only 60% said no, they weren't okay with it. And 40% said yes. And the sports card dad results were pretty much like the reciprocal of that. I I believe his was kind of 60% yes and 40% no, but like, one clear thing is there are a lot more people out there than I ever would have thought that are perfectly fine with buffing scratches out of cards and stuff like that or soaking them to try to get creases out of it. I I was shocked that my results were what they were. And I, I think probably hobby-wide, it is probably pretty fairly split. And that shocks me. Um, the statistician and you didn't like the wording of it. The politi- former politician of me was like, oh, this is a push poll. <laughs> That's what they're called. It's, they're called push polls. Um, yeah, it was. I mean, I'm I'm wondering, like, how many of the people that responded to yours, Mike, were just people that might have just seen it, you know, weren't your followers. Yeah, it's possible. Because it, it, it doesn't feel like folks, especially folks that are that follow you our stack sale buyers a lot of the time follow our channel like it's it, w- it was weird to me that it was as close as it was right mm-hmm. but with dustin's being 40 60 or there's abouts i mean you're right i mean it does feel like a 50 50 thing i think it's shocking i mean 50 percent of the hobby i mean i'm not going to say they're wrong but 50 percent of the hobby is just i think misguided on what they should be co- how they should be collecting a little bit i like EP says it all the time. He likes the story of the card. I kind of feel the same way. Like, give me a card that has a a crease in it because, hey, Tom Brady wasn't a first round draft pick. He was a sixth rounder, right? So people were throwing his cards in the, you know, in the dollar boxes or, you know, they weren't sleeving and top loading them. I mean, there's a story to be had there. And, you know, it's a shame that that more people don't feel that way. I guess I, we're not in the minority, but I we're not in as big of a majority as I thought we would be. Yeah, we're not in Kansas anymore, right? Like this is not the hobby no, that we grew up. Definitely not. Right? Like, like this, I mean, and I, I feel like <laughs> the prevalence of the word, the words asset class, the prevalence of like Justin Her- huge Justin Herbert cards, and like the, like the, just the way, and everybody gets excited when these massive Babe Ruth cards or whatever gets sold in big auctions and everything, and it's a, a huge part that that is it always has always been a big part of, of this hobby. The prevalence of like, grading. Oh, go yeah, prevalence grading and values. Mm-hmm. Yep. Right. Yeah, I mean, I mean, everybody like that. That is. It has moved beyond. It has gone well beyond us collecting sets. Joe putting his marble sets in his binders, and Mike collecting that awesome um, insert set that he has behind him, and just like it, it, it has gone beyond beyond that. I don't know how to point <laughs> you to got, that. Nailed you it. almost you hit yourself good, good right job. in the face. Good, 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 good job, buddy. Good job, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but I mean, it, it is it is it is well beyond that, and I, I'm 
I, while I was surprised that Mike, your results were the, the that forty to sixty, I also feel like it's 50 50 where we have people like fifty percent of the people are here just because of the monetary part of the the hobby. And I I I, I don't want to yuck anybody's yum. I, I say that you know on, on occasion. But I mean, I, I feel like we like we're we're not that we're, we're not that, and we, but we can't change that, right? Like, or, I mean, no, that's we not, can't. I mean, we're old guys with. yelling at the clouds. I mean, <laughs> right? Clearly, the time. Like, okay, I'm not gonna say I'm for it because I'm not, but I will say I can totally understand where it comes from because, okay, say Panini's charging me now, like over a thousand dollars a box for prism point. basketball yeah. right yeah. and okay there's very little i can get out of that now mm -hmm. that can make my money back mm -hmm. if i get a victor Wembanyama and i pull it out and i'm all excited and i see it has a big like scratch down it i'm pissed off so like i yeah i totally understand where that person probably goes, you know what? If there's something out here that I can get rid of that, why is it a problem? Why should that be an issue? I had to pay over a thousand dollars and then it comes out looking like this crap. That's not fair to me. I'm going to do this and I'm going to feel okay about it. Like I do understand yeah. that. Yeah. And I don't know, like, I think a lot of it isn't just, Oh, well, I got to make as much money as I can. Like, I do think a lot of it is, because of the price of wax and how little, you know, everything is trying to get the bigger hit. And there's just too much of that stuff that comes out with issues. Like I, I, I do understand where those people come from. I don't want to do it myself. I'll always consider it altering a card, but I'm not somebody who's buying tons of thousand dollar boxes of cards. So I'm not really the person who would be in the position that I just put out there, but I understand. it. You wonder, you know, when Fanax has everything and, and boxes are less than a hundred dollars each, if people will still be doing it, I guess is the, the I question I have. Rid of it, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, seriously though. Like, like <laughs> I so get ridiculous. I know. <laughs> I love it. Is. I love it. <laughs> um, uh... Seriously though. I wonder what the poll would look like if you put out um, – if you are buying a card for your personal collection, do you have a problem with Kurt's Ooh. card care? Yes. Right? Like I'm curious what the votes would be there because it's all well and good when you're doing that to get rid of the card. Mm -hmm. but what about when you're getting the card? Like the person who's buying that 101 in Wemby – they know it's been altered, right? They know it's going under the Kurt's card care thing. So maybe – won't matter for that but i i don't know will it change the value in people's eyes of that card it would me but then the person who's putting out the million dollars or however much that goes for chances are they're just holding it try and flip it anyway they're not the end user either so you, you kind mm -hmm. of wonder like how people would feel about it if it's a card they're buying for their personal collection do they have as big of an issue with it then or less of an issue with it? As long as it looks pretty on display in a case, maybe it doesn't bother them. But for me, it would. If you are going to sell it on eBay, a similar thing, are you going to, are you going to put in the title Kurt curse card care or something like that, that, you know, that this card was, was modified by Kurt's card care. There's no, if, if you're not going to do that, if you're not going to disclose that information, then you're doing something illegal. You're doing something that you shouldn't be doing. Right. Like that's, that's it. Okay. But devil's advocate here at the end of the day, card? If I sold you a prism card and I took a scratch out of it and didn't leave any residue behind and I don't tell you and you get it and I'm you look at the card it. and it looks beautiful, are you really hurt by it? Well, when you try and grade it. <laughs> <laughs> I like how your voice cracked it a little bit there. Like you're, you're trying really hard. <laughs> I, I needed to point out that I like don't want to do this. Right, I'm right, playing. Right. I'm you playing a character advocate. here. I'm yeah, devil's yes. advocate. <laughs> so that's um, why I took the voice up there. <laughs> so in that scenario, sure. If you're just getting that card to put into a sleeve or a one touch mm -hmm. and put it in your display, like what you if it was Mike? graded? What if PSA graded a ten and I alter? I took a scratch out of it. I don't want to say alter it. I'm playing devil's advocate. I. I fixed the card that should have come out that way and made it right. the way it should have looked. Like, do you have a problem with it? At the end of the day, it's still a 10, still looks beautiful to you. 
maybe it's not a problem. Maybe ignorance is bliss, I guess, in this scenario. Like if the person doesn't know, they, they don't know, which I mean, I guess ignorance, like I said, ignorance is bliss. And 50% of the people also, it seems wouldn't care. Right. And it's like, is it, <laughs> is it any different it's than weird. if you have like a vintage card that like Evan Mathis trimmed? And you have it in a PSA nine and you love that card, even though he trimmed it and you don't know it, like it's really all the same thing, right? I mean, if, if you is, don't know, it's not going to hurt you. Right. Ignorance is bliss. <laughs> but uh, the, 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 the big harm, though, does come from if you do buy that card raw, which I'm sure there are people out there who are cleaning cards and selling them raw because they look beautiful in the pictures. And they're worried maybe PSA will catch them. So they're selling them raw and then someone's going to buy it and then submit it to PSA and it's going to come back altered. You know, so I don't know. There's that's that's the problem. And PSA kind of came out against it, but also kind of admitted they have no clue how to catch it. So it's I mean, yeah, that's a whole you know? other can of worms. That right. I, I, I think we've said before. Yeah. Yeah. We, we've said before about how people like you can find a really well centered six PSA six. To get home, do a little bit of trimming, and all of a sudden becomes a it looks like a PSA nine. So, like it looks like a PSA nine, and yeah. that's uh, that's the that's one of the issues. All right, well, you know, our buddy, the sports car dad Dustin, had a rumor video. Also, he posted on Saturday. This is a rumor that he got from somebody on Twitter. I think it came off of there. I don't think there would be any validity to this, but. He said in the video, the rumor was that eBay was going to add a 3% buyer premium to sports card purchases. I don't think, I, like, I think whatever, whoever came up with this information was making something up. Like, eBay can't do that, right? I mean, I could be totally wrong. Maybe it's not a rumor. Maybe they're thinking about it. But I think that people would revolt against that, right am i wrong they would revolt and then still buy cards like do you think though on yes eBay? yes oh. absolutely okay like i don't i i also agree with you i i think this is a rumor that they're probably not doing right that being said if ebay did this people would bitch and moan for a solid couple of weeks and then go to their watch list and start buying stuff because where where else are they going to go? They're going to go to more card shows. Are they going to go to more local card shops? Are they going to go to Cards HQ? I don't know. Like eBay is just so convenient. It's hard not to see them go there. I, I just it's it's people bitch as they're opening up Panini products about how expensive and terrible Panini products are. I mean, they're still going to go and buy Panini products. People are still going to use eBay regardless. Yep, I agree with both of you guys. Um, the, we've we've talked before about the volume of cards that eBay sells. Like the, that's pr the biggest card marketplace, um, you know, on, on the planet. And so you can think to yourself, well, why would they want to add that premium if they're already doing all of this, uh, you know, make, making all these sales? But then you think to yourself, also, they're making all these sales. Why? I mean, I'm, I'm sure that that three percent is probably going to benefit them. Would benefit them as well, right? So I mean, I feel like. That they, they could, I could tell, totally see them doing that because of the volume as well. Oh, it's that would 50, be interesting 50. to see. I mean, eBay is just so pro buyer, they've always mm -hmm. been so pro buyer that it seems out of character for them yeah. to do something like that. But who knows? Like, like Dustin did say they have the authenticity guarantee in there that has been free so far, that obviously isn't free mm -hmm. for them to do so. Maybe that's a way they're going to try to recoup those costs. I don't know. Uh, maybe they've raised the rate so much on sellers that they want to make more. <laughs> and they're like, well, we're going to have to give some to the buyer now, too. So, yeah, that's possible. I don't know. That'll be interesting to keep an eye on, though. Uh, kind of end up this week with a video that baseball card collector, investor, dealer Chris Sewell had out here. Joe, you were the one that threw this out to us he has a really cool video if i remember to link it in the description i'll do that but I, i'm Maybe. probably not going to because we're re <laughs> pull the curtain back we're recording late this is gonna throw me totally off schedule but if i remember i'll do it but a it's great 10 video yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. so he did a great video on a lot of firsts 
in the sports card world. So I thought it'd be fun to kind of talk about what we thought about the video, like things that popped into our head, things that might have been surprised about, things we thought maybe he could have he may have forgotten. Maybe you should have added to it. What were your first impressions, Joe? You were the one that brought it up to us. I thought this is a Hall of Fame caliber video. <laughs> I I second that. Yeah. Um, uh, all in favor, right? Um, I, <laughs> like, this is the type of video that, that as collectors, you love to see. Like, there's not enough of it out there. Mm -hmm. And he does it on such a high level. I mean, we have some, you know, little nitpicks, I'm sure, about the list. But just overall, just really, really fun video. And since it was like most of the stuff was around, like came first when we were all really hardcore mm -hmm. collectors, it's like I had that set. I opened up those <laughs> packs. It was just it was really, really fun to go through that and see him talk about that stuff. I, I wish he did a series of it, you know, yeah, just broke great. it up and made it like a three parter or something and, and talked about, you know, maybe, maybe well, a couple years, maybe <laughs> well, maybe one, when he watches this, he'll get that idea. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> um, my thought was, uh, this is what the, the hobby documentary should be. This is the content should be the hockey, hobby documentary. And I want Chris Sewell to be running, running it. Like it, he doesn't he does have, have experience. Film, yes, he does. He does. Like why, he not, should be... why not me? I host a podcast well, every week. Well, I mean, hey, you can I used work to with do him. Two on, of them. But I, I want, like, uh, after watching his video, like, I want him to be have a, a, have a big role, a big role in a, a hobby documentary. Like, I really think that would be he. That would be amazing because I, I really enjoyed it. Um, one, one of the things that I like about his his uh, videos is that he he gets he makes a lot of points, but also he gets through through it pretty quickly. And I I, I wanted to see more of this as well. But also, like it was a good snappy. Like there was no no fat. It just like, like went, went right through really really well. I thought I, I enjoyed it a lot. Imagine that a video that can be fun and educational. Right. <laughs> Again, Hall of Fame worthy. <laughs> if only there was a Hall of Fame if that only. this guy could go in for this kind of content. Exactly. Maybe we should make one. Maybe maybe that's not the good. real no? the real Hall of Fame. Let's, the real? Let's not do that. The real. Yeah. Put real in front of will be good. <laughs> well, it, you know, <laughs> me being like I am, I made up a little list of things here. So why don't I just say them to you? You guys yeah. can tell me how ridiculous I am. <laughs> okay. 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 First of all, I want to say I was honestly a little shocked to find out that 1971 tops was really the first baseball set that was mostly made up of action shots. Yeah. And same. I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I was this many days old when I found <laughs> that out. Like, uh, that's just one of those things. I'm like, wait, no, what like just i went through that whole process of he's smoking crack to come on to wait maybe should i look at this oh my god he's right <laughs> so, yeah that, one, that was really yeah. crazy did you know that ep like, I, I did not i didn't think like you think about some of the older ones like they have like a little maybe a little tiny version of themselves like mm -hmm. swinging a bat but mostly it was a, a portrait type, type and it was of, artwork so, it was artwork yeah, too yeah. wasn't it it wasn't an actual mm -hmm photo right so right and then 72 yeah. the next year the, the, the in action like they actually had like their own oh, people like these as action photos apparently we might as well just do a whole subset of in action cards yeah. right so and they those lasted those. for i mean to, up until mm -hmm. the at least the 80s right yeah, i mean the absolutely. 84 yeah. football mm -hmm. yeah. has them yeah okay i have to admit i never ever thought that wild card striped cards were parallels right. yes <laughs> They are. He's not wrong. Are, yes, yes. One hundred percent are. But even like till I watched that video, never considered that. <laughs> That's a, a really parallel. good point. Yeah. They're parallels. Yeah. They are clearly parallels, mm -hmm. but I never considered that. Six card rainbow, if you think I, about it. Yeah, a yeah. rainbow because yeah. they Over. had different <laughs> colors on the stripes yep. yep. too. Yep. Like I, uh, that blew my mind. <laughs> yep, I always thought 92 Tops Gold was was like the first parallel, right? That, that's what I always thought. Yeah, was like that's what parallel. I think, too. But as but, soon as you saw it and you think about it, you're like, yep. yeah, that's right. Oh, absolutely right, <laughs> yeah. 100%. Although yeah. he didn't point out the fact that you could take a 1,000-strike card 
and send it in and get 1,000 of those cards. So this was, a, it was kind of a redemption too. Like yeah, I don't, yeah. he didn't do one, the first redemption, but could that possibly be the first a redemption twofer. card too? It could be. A twofer, well, yeah. And I, yeah. I was trying to remember, I feel like you could collect 25 individual cards and redeem them for a 25 stripe as well. Really? I oh, man. think so. I was trying to like trying to look up information on 91 <laughs> wildcard football right. is like, yeah. But if only Darren Ravel was around back then. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I feel like that went both ways. Like you could, I knew you could send in like the whatever stripe and get that many of the cards, but I I feel like you could collect the cards and send them in for a striped card. So <laughs> I feel like that's a Barry Sanders, Barry Sanders rainbow that some of us collectors should probably maybe try to try to do. A thousand, the thousand trips got to be so ridiculously expensive, though, right? Yeah, like they are. Be, yeah, they are uh, not expensive. expensive. If EP starts at rainbow, I will say for the next three cards for six in a row, it's going to be that Barry Sanders card <laughs> each time, but in a different parallel. <laughs> that's what's going to happen. Yeah, that's true. I did know that. Okay. Um, Let's see. Yeah, he didn't point any good trade card. Okay. The 93 finest refractors. We know those. Like, first of all, here we are 31 years later, and the most popular card in the hobby is that card still, like a refractor, yeah. like mm -hmm. yep. whatever color it is. Like, how amazing is that? That something from that early, like that was like before a lot of the innovations really kicked in in the 90s yeah. like that they are still the most popular mm -hmm. card to get today might yeah. call it by a different name if you're panini it's a, a prism card but like that is crazy he didn't point out though that finest in the chromium cards actually started in 1992 with the football update set that they put out so i just wanted to throw that out there uh do you remember those EP, the black bordered? Uh, I don't set? have any of them, but you actually shared the, the, the text, like like um, sh photos of those in the recently. And then I, oh, I didn't yeah, know about them at the time. That. So yeah, yeah, they, they were well. they were the first ones that came out. Um, the rookie patch autograph. The only thing I have to say about that is, back in two thousand, they weren't. You could get patches if you were lucky, but they were game jerseys. They weren't patches like i think today patch is pretty much interchangeable for like a jersey swatch but like they're different like some of them have pieces of the jersey and some have pieces of the patch and they were even the name of them were even you know rookie jersey yeah. autographs. so like I maybe have, they should be called rjas yeah <laughs> i i have i have a couple of those from that set i have a sean alexander and i have a um Chris Redman of all things. And the, the point I wanted to make about that. So Brady wasn't a highly drafted enough rookie to get one of those, right? Mm -hmm. He had just the base out of 1350 for the SPX. I asked actually Aliko three, I commented on one of his videos. Where do you think that Brady would rank if it was a rookie Jersey auto? And he said it would rival contenders. He oh, said yeah. it would yeah. probably be, it would probably it be might even be higher than, yeah, contenders. but the, the, the only like, reason it wouldn't is, be you know. is because it's horizontal instead of vertical. That might be the only reason. But yeah, I mean, could you imagine how cool that card would be? That was that was such a great set. What were they? Yeah. Were they also numbered to twelve fifty? The the jersey rookies were they also numbered? I believe so. Yeah. Okay. I believe they were twelve fifty, and then the um, the base rookies were thirteen fifty. Yeah, well, one yeah, of those with an actual patch or piece of number on it would be astronomically priced, yeah. right? Like yeah. it'd just be outrageous. Oh, yeah. I mean, players just signed so much back then. It's crazy, isn't it? 1,200 cards. <laughs> joke. joke. Yeah, Come on. yeah, yeah. I got it. It's okay. getting late, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> the the first all women set of Pinnacle Inside WNBA in 1997, which I had a Lisa Leslie I found in my stuff. Sent that in on my PSA order and came back a PSA 10. And I sold that card for like $400 back in 2021. So that was pretty cool. But I was disappointed because you guys know one of my favorite things about this hobby are cards in a can. Yep. And the fact that he brought up this set but didn't mention 
that the packs came out of a can. I don't think that I, I'm taking him out of the hall of fame. I'm kicking him out. <laughs> The new I Hall of Fame like... we just put him in, I'm taking him out. Because if you don't mention that they were cards in a can, you're automatically disqualified. I feel like he probably had it in his notes and was like, after he was like, when we're back in it's like, crap, I forgot to say that came in a can. I don't feel like he, I feel like he maybe forgot. So like it was, good. It, it, he it was an accident. Just, it was a, yeah. just an accident. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't think he, I think he I definitely knows that they came in a can. I right? think like it a, was malicious and intentional. <laughs> You're gonna call. You're calling um, out Chris Sewell right here I, on this channel I, right now. Oh, you know, right now for not not mentioning that they came in a can, <laughs> and I have the official official can opener. Official. If I don't drop it, official's things. great. Right here, it's here. Right here. Oh, you don't believe me? There it is. Look. No, we do believe you. That. We've seen it. <laughs> viewers, I'm talking to the viewers, Joe. Did look you at that. Do a video using that can opener. Shh. They didn't watch it back then. That was like three Don't years ago. It. He's gonna he's link gonna he's somewhere. gonna link it. He's gonna link it up up at the top. Up here. No, I'm um, not. <laughs> couple Go of things. Find it. <laughs> a couple a couple of things real quick. Uh, I need to correct myself. Actually, those SPS SPX rookie jersey autos were out of two thousand. Actually, a higher wow. number than wow. a lot the of higher. Yeah, that is. <laughs> A higher number than the um, base ones uh, for the women's set. It, it, what's interesting is when I saw that, it made so much sense because I talked about that Brandy Chastain card. It was in a men's set. It was in the MLS mm -hmm. set. Like they had a subset of women's cards. Even though MLS is terrible, they still couldn't put women in their own set. They jammed them into the MLS set, which is mind blowing to me. Yeah. The one other point I have here too. Um, he's when he was talking about the first game jersey cards being in the upper deck and the upper deck hockey, he he said that they took a while to catch on. Now, maybe his experience that was the case, but I know at my shop, like when people found out those things were in there, they just wanted them. Like they really wanted them. The thing was, they were one in twenty five hundred packs, oh, woof, so woof. they were really woof, not woof. easy to get. <laughs> So maybe that was part of it, but like I, I, I didn't really agree with the part that they they took a while to catch on. I, I, I remember them being very hot and people like customers thinking, "Wow, that's really cool." But of course, we didn't pull them because they were so hard <laughs> right. to get. <laughs> One is that a case hit? I think at that point, almost probably even more more than that right that would be a multiple way cases, too much it? math for me to be able yeah. to do it this time of the night <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but no that was so, a fantastic video sorry yeah go ahead. you know i just i want to say the one thing you didn't bring up which was the thing that scared me a little bit was that he brought up the reggie jackson i don't want to ruin all like, like i don't want i want everybody to go watch this video because it, it's awesome but the reggie jackson 1990 uh, upper deck uh, high series autograph is the first pack pulled autograph you can get out of a product and um, he said i think this is criminally underrated as I was just hoping like people don't watch that and go, oh, I gotta go get this thing. And well, you just the sent them there to watch it. <laughs> you you weren't gonna buy it anyway. What are you doing? Yeah, you want to pull one out of a pack. I do want to pull out of a pack, but man, you're gonna spend more on packs than that card even sells for. Probably. <laughs> There's a lot of other probably stuff in have. there too that we didn't mention. These yes, were just yes. the notes I made there. Yeah, like that was also the first numbered card, not sequentially mm -hmm. set, but like that individual card was hand numbered yep. and they brought up the 91 Donruss elite, which right. I, I, I still love elite cards. Like oh, yeah. they talk about 10,000 of each, but again, <laughs> they were incredibly difficult yes. to pull yes. out of a pack. Mm -hmm. Oh, those were the days like mm -hmm. maybe bring back, you know, junk wax and make everything hard to get. Now, Let's... And maybe it'll be worth money. Let's not bring back 91 Don Rest or 91 Fleer. Though. They, they can stay. They can stay. They can stay. What's wrong with 91 Fleer? What do you, ooh, you, you don't like the color yellow? The glow in the dark yellow with the black. They were they're, they're, unique. They're, they're they were um, memorable. Unique, unique, is, unique is a way to describe them. Yes. You're talking it, about them, what, 30 some years later? True. How is true. incredible is it, though, when you can open up a 5,000 count box of cards that's totally full and you can go, oh, I don't have to look in that row. It's 91 Fleer. <laughs> and you put it back down. Like, I even that. have a box of them. I'm not <laughs> even exaggerating. I wow. even have a box of them, which is wild. One thing before we go that I wanted to mention to the top, uh, for 
the three people who are still watching. <laughs> I, I just want to. So the elite eight for the women's is today, right? I believe. And um, this is how impressively awesome Caitlin Clark is. Are you ready for this? Okay. My grandfather knows who she is. Wow. <laughs> he was watching women's college basketball. And every time she took a shot, this man never watched football, never watched baseball, never watched men's <laughs> basketball, never watched hockey. He is watching her. 80 year old Wayne Day is watching Caitlin Clark. And every time he hits a three, he goes, Boy, she's pretty impressive, isn't she? <laughs> wow. <laughs> like, it is shocking to me. So, so there we were talking about women's sports with the first women set during that video. I figured I'd throw That's that awesome. out there. Wayne Day, all in on Caitlin Clark. <laughs> That's incredible. That's a great barometer. <laughs> and yeah, that really think, is. It is like it, like it, that really does tell you how popular she is, though. Yeah. Like, yeah. and the appeal, like. Just think of how many people are going to be watching Ice Cube's Big Three basketball when she signs with them for five million dollars. So you <laughs> saw that? that is, but yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they apparently are offering her a five million dollar contract. It's like three on three basketball. I watched it before. It's like it's different, like half court kind of thing. Oh, I think. Okay. But yeah. Do it. The thing is, if I she know. was in it, if she was in it. I would. Yeah, I would watch it. Right. Like we we would we would watch it. I mean. <laughs> We need to go get the rights to make cards of that right now, just in case. And <laughs> Michael Rubin, Ice Cube, it. call me. We could all meet up at my grandfather's house, have some Pizza Hut, right? <laughs> and just watch yeah. Caitlin Clark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, there you have it. I think that's all we got for you this week. That was a pretty good chat, guys. I will see you <laughs> when next week. Take care, guys. <laughs> See ya, boys. Adios.